Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the action in the House of Lords last night as five amendments were approved by fairly large margins to Sunak's Rwanda safety bill, meaning that there's going to be a significant delay at least in getting the legislation passed, if indeed it ever is passed. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So Sunak told the House of Lords not to frustrate the will of the people by revising his Rwanda safety bill. However, the people have never had a say on either this specific legislation or even the basics of the Rwanda plan at all. In fact, as the plan flies in the face of the Conservatives' own winning manifesto, which committed itself to international laws where asylum was concerned, it's actually Sunak who's frustrating the will of the people. The latest report is that the Rwanda plan is now costing almost £2 million for every asylum seeker that we could send to Rwanda. And thus, assuming Rwanda even accept their claims at the other end. Remember, those who fail their claim system, they're sent back to the UK under the deal. So if Sunak wants to be able to claim will of the people for this shambles of a plan, he should put it to the people in his party's manifesto, which he's going to have to do if the Lord stands firm. But that is the big question. It's no surprise that the House of Lords have voted in favour of amendments to the bill at the first pass. You know, not only is the bill as written a clear nonsense and would give the government the power to ignore international law, include actually ignore domestic law, further damaging our reputation on the world stage. It's the job of the House of Lords to amend legislation. Like even generally useful legislation can still be improved and tightened up. And it is the job of the House of Lords to do just that. However, the Lords rarely actually blocks legislation and even more rarely sinks it altogether. So the question was not really whether the House of Lords would kill the bill when presented to them, but what would happen once it goes back to the Commons? You know, because Sunak presumably will reject the amendments and it's then returned to the Lords in a sort of process called ping pong. What will happen? Sometimes when the Lords suggest a load of amendments and the government goes, no, we don't like those, we're getting rid of them all, the Lords goes, OK, well, you know, whatever. And they let it pass through. Are they going to this time? I mean, one of four things can really happen here. First, the Lords could put all of their amendments right back in there and send it back to the House of Commons. That would be the most in-your-face response to Sunak because it would involve not even trying to accommodate the government. It's also possible because there is every justification for the Chamber to insist that the government does not get to ignore our international obligations without a public mandate, at least, or cross-party support. And it has neither. The amendments were approved by such a large margin. It does suggest the support is potentially there to face the government down over this. Second possibility is the Lords could say, oh, you don't like our amendments. All right, fair enough. And then come up with some entirely new amendments, which basically do the same things. You know, which are that the government should not be able to bypass the courts and should not be able to randomly declare Rwanda to be safe for refugees if it is not. That would look less obstructive because that would look like, oh, you don't like these amendments? Fair enough, fine, we'll work on some more. But have much the same impact as the first option. Third, Sunak could either accept the amendments or compromise and work with the peers in order to agree some different amendments which would cover the key concerns but still otherwise see the legislation passed. That would have the effect of Sunak's plan still being subjected to the Supreme Court, which is a British court, it's not a foreign court, stop complaining who are clearly going to come to the same conclusion as last time and there will be no flights taken off. And the fourth possibility is that the Lords just back down. They allow the bill through, um, let Sunak take the responsibility for the impact of it. I would certainly hope this is not the case because in reality, Sunak will not be taking any of the responsibility for it. He will not be Prime Minister for much longer and it will be the UK generally and a government opposed to the scheme who will have to clear up the mess. Part of the puzzle will be just what Sunak wants from this bill. He knows that flights to Rwanda, he says, as soon as the flights are in the air, he expects channel crossings to significantly reduce overnight, like within a few days. He knows that these flights to Rwanda at a cost of £1.8 million per refugee now are not going to stop the boats. So there's a sense in which you might argue, well, given that he must know that, he doesn't really want to push the Lords hard to accept the bill because then he'll be found out. However, much more quietly, the government are working with the EU on schemes which might reduce the number of small boat crossings. 
And if they coincide, he could always take the credit for a drop in channel crossings by linking it to the Rwanda plan rather than the joint projects with the EU. But then on the flip side, these shenanigans presume that the government is physically capable of sending refugees to Rwanda, even if they can ignore the courts or the courts somehow say, yeah, you can do that. Even if the Lords do, you know, for whatever reason, defer to a bunch of rogues without a public mandate, many of whom don't actually believe in their own plan, can Sunak actually send anyone? We've seen reports that commercial airlines don't want the contracts due to the hit to their reputation it would cause. The MOD can provide the plane, but they say they don't have any airfields secure enough to cope with the inevitable protests. And these protests, you would think, would be fairly robust. Protesters could quite reasonably say they are acting to prevent a crime being committed. And as sending refugees to Rwanda under Sunak's plan means bypassing the courts, this would presumably be a decent defence if the government tried to prosecute these, uh, you know, protesters. So I think the protests would be quite, I, I think they would be emboldened here. And the MOD presumably thinks so as well. They've said, if you want us to, if you want us to be part of this process, then this is a home office issue. It's asylum. It's a home office issue, not an MOD issue. So they can pay to beef up security of an airfield. And I'm not aware of any reports that the home office or the treasury separately have done so. And if Sunak doesn't actually have the means to send refugees to Rwanda, regardless of court action, so if he doesn't have the planes, he doesn't have the staff, and he doesn't have an airfield, then this is a massive bluff and presumably he won't be pushing the Lords too hard on this. Perhaps he just wants to blame unelected Labour peers in the Lords for, you know, frustrating the will of the people and then call an election with his plan in the manifesto. You know, basically going to the far right within his party and go, look, I tried, you know, I tried, sorry, they blocked it. And yeah, I know you said my plan didn't go far enough, but your plan definitely would have been blocked. So, you know, there's nothing we can do. We just need an election to get the mandate, right? But another factor to consider is that Sunak doesn't really want to talk too much about the Rwanda plan, beyond blaming Labour for it not working. At the start of the year, we were told that Tory strategists were urging Sunak to get the Rwanda bill through the House of Commons stages and then stop talking about it. Focus on the economy. You know, because if he has to start talking about his you know, Rwanda plan again, it's not only going to use up messaging bandwidth for talking about their tax cuts, which is what they want to be discussing all the time, it is a serious source of division amongst Sunak's MPs. Remember, there are, there are MPs in the party that are agitated for Sunak to go. Now that he's just posted polling results, that are the, for Ipsos Mori, like one of the top pollsters, their worst ever for the Conservatives. Lowest day of ever poll rating for the Conservatives, and they've been going since 1978. So the pressure, the pressure to remove Sunak is quite large. Something like this just ramps up that pressure. Also, it's something which helps Reform UK. It's what Reform UK wants to see being discussed in the news. You know, Tory strategists will be pleased that Reform UK are not actually backing up their hype with results in by-elections and may not in the general election. But there's no sense in keep talking about the one thing which has allowed them to hive off a load of votes from the Conservatives. Every time Sunak talks about the Rwanda plan, he's talking about a Tory failure. But we do not, of course, know what is in the mind of Sunak with regards to this bill. Does he want it to succeed? Does he just want to keep pretending that he's committed to it, but doesn't mind others blocking it? And how determined are the Lords to make sure they do not enable illegal legislation, which has not a hint of public support? Those are the questions we're not really going to get an answer to until it has been bounced back from the House of Commons. The Lords haven't even finished with it themselves. Yeah, they've got more amendments to vote on later this week. Of course, if Sunak calls the election in the not too distant future, it won't really matter. Once the budget has been announced, Sunak might well call the election at any time. It's theoretically possible he calls the election on Wednesday. I suspect he won't because if he calls the election before there's been any sort of resolution with his Rwanda bill, it does sort of give the game away that he's not really bothered about it. But who knows? Only Sonak himself, really. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.